And we welcome you back to the Raleigh County Convention Center, Dave Bartsdale Court here at the 2024 the New River CTC Invitational. The uh, major sponsor is Little General Stores, and here we are on day two, game two, the number game seven of this 28 uh, game event that started yesterday. It runs all the way through Saturday with Bill O'Brien. I'm Mara Slowry, and we think we're going to have a very good uh, girls basketball game here on the high school level. Bill, it'll be six and one Princeton against eight and two Wyoming East, and uh, Wyoming East, the defending class AA champion, they beat Summers County for the AA title last March, and Princeton also made it to the state tournament. Uh, as well. I've had a chance to see Princeton earlier in the year. They beat Beckley 48-34 the first game of the season at Beckley uh, back on uh, November the 28th. And Princeton is 6-1. and one. They're only lost to George Washington. Wyoming East enters the game at 8-2. and two. You know, Mayors, I'm going to give you a little tidbit of information before we get serious here. For years and years, when the ladies' programs started getting good at local high schools, everybody was the Lady Eagles, the Lady this, the Lady that except for Princeton, and they kept calling themselves the Tigerettes. So now they are finally the Lady Tigers. Yes, and I remember that, but I think they did drop that Tigerette some time ago. Yeah. And like I said, they're they got were the in last sync. one to do it. Right. Well, they're in sync and in line with everybody else. Both teams going through the warm-ups. Wyoming East will be the home team on the scoreboard, although they'll wear gray uniforms trimmed in uh, dark green, and Princeton will wear blue trimmed in orange. We'll take our first break, come back, get you ready for the tip here in about 10 minutes as you're watching live streaming coverage of the 2024 New River CTC Invitational being presented by Little General Stores here on Video Productions. The one thing that everyone's loving and as it happens they come by the dozen everybody loves it and everybody knows it everybody loves a donut. Are you ready to steer your career in a new direction? Look no further than New River Community and Technical College. With brand new simulators and virtual reality equipment, New River CTC's Commercial Driver's License Program provides on-the-road experience before ever getting behind the wheel. You can become road ready by earning your CDL in just six weeks, along with a 180-hour certificate. Whatever your dream, New River CTC's CDL program puts you on the route to success. Don't wait. Apply now. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Duncan is here with your holiday helpers. Peppermint mocha and toasted white chocolate signature lattes. A touch of delicious holiday magic to help you seize the season. Sip through the holidays with signature lattes at Duncan. America runs on Duncan. And we welcome you back to the Raleigh County Convention Center on Dave Barksdale Court with Bill O'Brien. I'm Maris Lowry getting you ready for this a girls high school basketball game between 6-1 and one Princeton and 8-2 and two Wyoming East. We did have one other game already played here today, and that was Bluefield beating Shady Bill. You did that game. Bluefield beat Shady in girls basketball 47-34. to 34. So with the win by Bluefield, Bluefield will play the winner this game tomorrow afternoon at 4.30, while Shady will get the loser of this game tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And we do have the official stats on that game. Bluefield winning 47-34. to 34. With a strong finish in that game, they led from start to finish. And the team totals was interesting because Bluefield shot 39% from the floor. Meantime, Shady Spring had trouble. Only 24% shooting from the floor, 26% shooting from downtown, and only 56% shooting from the charity stripe. Also, the Lady Tigers had 24 turnovers in that ball game, and they were out-rebounded 33-19. So 
if you're the head Shady Spring coach, you're saying, hey, we got to work on our shooting. we got to cut down the turnovers. we got to rebound better. And, in fact, every coach is going to say those three things. Yeah, they're going to say we got to work on everything, right? Yeah. That's what they always say. Well, putting our attention to this game, Wyoming East with a new coach as Ryan Davidson takes over in his first year. And for Princeton, Matt Smith in his fourth year as Wyoming East is still out on the floor going through some warm-ups. The basket to our right. Princeton's already made their way to the locker room. We'll go ahead and take another break, come back, and get you ready. We're about oh, about four minutes away from tipping this one off between 6-1 and one Princeton, 8-2 Wyoming East, girls high school basketball coming up next here on Video Productions. WCIR.com. you back to the Raleigh County Convention Center with Bill O'Brien. I'm Maris Lowry, and we're still about oh, two and a half minutes away, Bill, of starting this ball game. It's a girls game, 6-1 and one Princeton against 8-2 and two Wyoming East. And, you know, Bill, it's kind of rare you don't see this too much in tournament that we're having the girls game right now or getting ready to come up, Princeton and Wyoming East. At the conclusion of this game, these same two schools will play on the boys' side. So it's very rare that you have – you know, the same teams play back-to-back -back games, girls and boys. Well, it really is. And I'm, I just like the way this tournament has come together. You know, they got good matchups, and they just have really treated everybody well. I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm going to tell it on Charlie Houck because he was the tournament director last week in that tournament. And he was telling about how difficult being a tournament director is. And he said, my very first game of my very first tournament, he said, I thought I had everything set. And he says, the first team comes in, and they said, okay, coach, where do we dress? And he said, uh-oh, I forgot about locker rooms. I forgot about assigning locker rooms. I mean, stuff like that. It's basic stuff, and they do it so well here at this tournament. Well, if you've never done it before, I can see how Charlie Howe would not know to do it. Yeah. And that's the thing. And once you've done it, hopefully they don't make that mistake again. <laughs> but, you know, the college does a great job. And, of course, Mike Green leads the way. But he's got a great staff that, you know, they've taken care of everybody. And one thing is they said to make sure the games run on time and take care of the customers, which are the people that come to watch the games. And we appreciate everybody on their attendance as well here on video production. So we're about, oh, about a minute and a half away from getting this started. As we look what's else coming up on the uh, slate for later this afternoon on into the night. As I mentioned, after we play this girls game with these teams, Princeton and Wyoming East, the same schools will get together in a boys game, and Bill, you'll have that. And then tonight at 6.15, Eric Thomas will join me for boys high school basketball. It'll be Musselman taking on Beckley. And then the nightcap, Eric will join me for girls basketball. It'll be Beckley and Spring Valley. Then a full slate of games, six games tomorrow, six games on Friday, and then we'll bring the curtain down on Saturday, and Saturday's games will get started at 11.15. And we've got six games on Saturday. The first one starting at 11.15, as I mentioned, in the morning. And the nightcap 
will be at 8 o'clock on Saturday night. And in fact, Maris, 11-15 start for each of the next three, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Six games every day starting at 11-15, the final going at 8 o'clock, and we'll have them all here on Video Productions. Well, we're just about ready to go. We need to get the starting lineups in the books. Princeton just now walking out in their blue uniforms, and you mentioned the home team on the scoreboard wearing gray. Well, here's another thing, Bill, and this is just the era in which we're in, and you look at all sports. You can turn on a college football game, a college basketball game, and it might take you a little bit to figure out who is who because they all no one wears white or wears dark. They all wear these colored uniforms. I remember when West Virginia was playing Pitt and I first turned on the game, I thought that Pitt was West Virginia because they were in gold and uh, West Virginia was in blue. It was like backwards. And it's like these teams were all these dark colors. And it's like back in the day, you always had to bring your light jersey. Someone wore white, someone wore dark. Now they're both wearing dark in this game this afternoon. There you go. Well, we're getting ready for the opening lineups, and we will show them to you right now. So Princeton, the visitors on the scoreboard, 6-1. and one. They are coached by Matt Smith in his fourth year. And Matt Smith now making his way to the bench. And we are moments away. And we're getting ready to get started. You can see it'll be Wright, Stull, Sarver, Collins, and Hurt. Like I said, it uh, seemed like a lot of these girls, I can remember Asia Collins, Maddie Stoll, uh, seemed like they've been playing forever. I've covered, you know, these Princeton for some time, you know, playing uh, against Beckley and, and seen them in the, covered in the state tournament last year, et cetera. So I've seen a lot of these girls play as there was the – Princeton starters, they are 6-1. and one. Wyoming East now, under first-year head coach Ryan Davidson, they are 8-2. and two. And the Warriors getting ready to be introduced. And we'll put up a Wyoming East starters here in just a second. There you've got Lusk, Blackburn, it's Madison Clark. She goes by Maddie. Like I said, it seems like that she got a red shirt year and a covert year. Seems like she's been around forever. Uh, Baker in Monroe. So it's Lusk, Blackburn, Clark, Baker, Monroe for first-year head coach Ryan Davison. And we're moments away from getting this game started. Look, Bill, we're going to start right on time, it looks like. Absolutely. They've done a great job in keeping this tournament right on schedule. And, you know, that's hard to do because, as any tournament director will tell you, you can't help if a game runs long for whatever reason and or if it goes into overtime. And we haven't had uh, – we've had some – Really exciting games, but we have not had a extra session yet. When not I yet. say yet. Not yet, <laughs> but it will happen. Well, when I say yet, it'll happen. It might happen in this game. <laughs> you know, it's All interesting right. too, Maris, that you know Princeton is in the 4A category, and Wyoming East is double A. Double A. That is correct. So it'll be Monroe in the center circle for Wyoming East, and Monroe will jump against Stull. The ball's in the air and controlled by Princeton going to the basket to our left. So glad you're with us here on Video Productions. Sit back, relax. We think we're going to have a very outstanding girls high school basketball game here this afternoon. So first crack at it will be Princeton. There's a nice drive. The short shot doesn't go. That shot put up by Stull, and the ball's loose, and Wyoming East comes out of there with it. They get a pass down low, and the ball is stolen away, and then re-stolen. Nice shovel pass into the lane. The shot hits up under the backboard. So each team misses their uh, first field goal, and back the other way we come with Princeton. And a nice play that time by Maddie Clark. Maddie Clark, Wyoming East leading, scored 15 a game. And Princeton's going to sit back in his zone, looks like, Bill. Now it's gotten really quiet in here. Yeah, Really quiet in here with the Shady Spring cheering section <laughs> gone. Yeah, the whole cheering section behind us was full for that last game. Yeah. But, you know, these kids got to be excited, one, to play on this floor, but to get out of school and play on this floor. Absolutely. Well, I mean, he's working it around the horn, trying to find somebody free. We're over a minute into the ball game. They get the ball inside. Nice backdoor cut. The layup is good. That's great execution. Is Baker able to score the first bucket of the game for Wyoming East? Here's Princeton. The layup. Count if it goes, and it goes. What a nice play that was by Sarver. 
Sarver, one of the team's experienced players, able to get the hoop in the arm. Looked really good. Let's watch the Pepsi replay. Look at this. This is how you draw it up. Yep, able to shoot through the contact off the window. Ties the game, and now trying to complete a three-point play will be Addison Sarver. Seems like she's been around forever as well. So Sarver at the free throw line, and free throw on its way, and she does not connect. So she does not complete the three-point play. Back the other way we go. Here's Clark. The cutter off. Here's a three on the left side, no good. And the long rebound comes out to Asia Collins for Princeton. Collins on the move. Sarver into the lane. Perhaps got away with an extra step. Perhaps. There's a little short shot right of the lane. That's a little strong that time by Sarver. And back the other way comes Wyoming East. Here's a three. Maddie Clark puts up the three. The long rebound is saved in. No, it isn't. It's out of bounds over to Princeton. So, Bill, we've had a lot of action. We've just not had a lot of scoring. Each team with one field goal to each. Well, you know, we've said this many times. To play in this building because of the depth perception, too, is such a big court, such a big building. Well, the thing about it is there's a foul. A lot of these girls on both teams, so I said both of them made the state tournament last year, played in Charleston. And Wyoming East has played up here many times. So I think a lot of these girls, these particular girls, I think it's not so much the perception because they've played in, in big arenas by playing, like I said, here before and at the state tournament in Charleston. Well, but, of course, they've been practicing in their regular gyms and playing in other gyms, and so it'll take them a quarter to get the kinks worked out, and then they'll be very comfortable here. Well, we hope so. <laughs> so Princeton will maintain possession of the ball. And Sarver to put it in play. They get it in, and it's taken away. Steal by Monroe. And over to Lusk. And now here's Clark with it. Now Princeton going. Well, looked like they were going to go man-to-man. -man. Monroe into the lane. Shovel pass to Clark. Good passing by Wyoming East. Here's a three. Good. The three ball by Blackburn. That's a good-looking shot. Wyoming East regains the lead. Here's Asia Collins with it. Stall with it now. And Princeton throws it away. You know, Maris, when you talk about Wyoming County basketball, and, of course, there are two high schools in the county now, but basketball has always been a way of life in Wyoming County. And now the girls' program at Wyoming East has been so good for so many years. I mean, it's, it's a tradition to be on this team. Well, it really is as Monroe gets into the lane and there's a foul on Princeton. It will stay with Wyoming East. But, yeah, you know, uh, Wyoming East winning the state title. And actually, Wyoming East beating Summers County in that title game, you had, you know, Summers County with the rich tradition of girls' basketball that they had mm -hmm. and Wyoming East able to beat them uh, for the state title last year. Mm-hmm. Here's Lusk, thought about the three. Princeton in that zone, coming up on the halfway point of quarter number one. Here's Clark. Now Lusk will dial it up for three and hit a three ball by Kendall Lusk. As Collins will bring it up for Princeton. Collins. Collins with a tough shot, and she scores. That was a difficult shot. A little floater right of the lane. Asia Collins back the other way quickly. Here's Wyoming East. The layup doesn't go. That is a new player into the game. Russell, Carly Russell, put that shot up, and it wouldn't go down. As Wyoming East will dip into its bench. You know, when girls have long hair and their hair is so long, it goes down in front. Of, Covers in, the number. Yes. Gabby Cameron. Cameron is in. into the ball game. Here's a shot from the corner. No good. And we got a foul on Cameron as uh, she'll climb the back of the Princeton defender. So that'll be a foul against Wyoming East. 
Got a pretty good crowd here for an afternoon session. Absolutely. We appreciate everybody that's also watching on video productions, whether you're watching YouTube or Facebook. Appreciate your attendance. Here's Collins with it in the front court. And Sarver, they cut her off. Here's a shot. And that was a two ball that doesn't go. And that shot was put up by Hurt. And it Hell will ball. be a uh, just out of bounds. It'll stay with Princeton. So Princeton to put it in play on the baseline. And the ball comes out high to Stull. She has to run it down near the midcourt line. And Collins with it now. And they throw it away to Princeton. Here's Wyoming East with it. Clark will set it up. Monroe, head of the lane, puts it on the deck. Nowhere to go. They get the ball, trying to get the ball down low in the paint, and it's knocked out of bounds. Trying to get the ball there on the low block. Trying to get the ball into Cameron. And Wyoming East will keep the possession on the baseline. Throw the ball in. Cameron puts up the short shot. It doesn't go. Battle for the rebound. Cameron's got it. And there is the ball and just knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Wyoming East. Both these teams are very tenacious on defense. Got a timeout by Princeton. So timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back as it's an 8-4 lead for Wyoming East here on a 30-second break here on Video Productions. Okay. Ready to steer your career in a new direction? Look no further than New River Community and Technical College. With brand new simulators and virtual reality equipment, New River CTC's Commercial Driver's License Program provides on-the-road experience before ever getting behind the wheel. You can become road ready by earning your CDL in just six weeks, along with a 180-hour certificate. Whatever your dream, New River CTC's CDL program puts you on the route to success. Don't wait. Apply now. And we're back out of the uh, break, 30-second timeout that Princeton called. Wyoming East will inbound the ball across the way right in front of the Princeton bench. You know, Mayor, as we were talking during the commercial, neither team is really in the flow yet. We expected a whole lot more scoring, and I expect that's going to happen. Yeah, maybe they still got that bus ride in them. You know, a bus ride from New Richmond up here, and then, of course, from Princeton. Of course, Princeton interstate all the way. And pretty good selling now that they got the new road for, for Wyoming East, but just uh, leaving uh, the school at Wyoming East and getting to the new road. But uh, I think you're right, Bill. I think after they kind of break in a little bit, as there's a ball thrown back out. Here's Clark. Thought about the three over to Monroe. Monroe tacks the basket, shoots it too strong, battle for the rebound, and Stull comes out of there with it for Princeton. But Wyoming East had really a couple good looks and just not able to make the shot. Well, and East had a five on four going too. Like hockey, right? Like the power yeah, play? That's right. <laughs> and there's a foul on the baseline. That foul's going to go against Wyoming East. So that's only going to be the uh, third team foul. As little we'll General yep. gets us our replay. And Monroe got there a little late and bodied up that time, bodied up hurt. And that's a good call. Actually, that's the fourth team foul. Here's Stahl with it. They get the ball down low. Nice move by Sarver up and in. Beautiful play that time by Sarver. Well, look at that head fake. Yep. Nice little kiss off the glass. Back the other way, Wyoming East able to score. Maddie Clark gets credit. So Clark coming in, averaging 15 a game. She gets her first two points of the afternoon. There's a turnover. Monroe comes out of there with it for Wyoming East. Wyoming East on the move. There's a drive. Shot doesn't go. And coming out of there with the rebound is hurt. Over to Collins for Princeton. Collins races the ball up the floor, and I think she dribbled it off her foot. She did not. It went off the foot of the Wyoming East defender, which was Baker. And now there's some wholesale changes for Wyoming East. Lusk back into the ball game. Also into the game is going to be Price for Wyoming East. And there's another one in there. that Blackburn. Blackburn into the game. So here's Hurt with it. A new player into the game for Princeton as well. That is Bain. 
And here comes Wyomenese as they turn Princeton over. Clark in the open floor. Lusk trails. Three ball. Short. Battle for the rebound. And Asia Collins comes out of there with it for Princeton. Collins on the move. Throws up a wild looking shot. It's short. And Clark with the rebound. Now the game may be getting a little too fast for him, Bill. <laughs> Here's a drive. A lot of contact. Count if it goes. It goes. And count the basket. That's a nice play that time by Blackburn. As we watch the little general instant replay, look at this play, Bill. Blackburn right there when she turns the corner, gets to the basket. Hurt commits the foul and chance for a three-point play. Oh, that was a nifty play that time by Katie Blackburn. And she completes the three-point play. Biggest lead of the game right here. Well, it's quiet for a moment. As Princeton will inbound the ball under full court pressure. So Collins having a hard time getting the ball up the floor over Lusk. Here's Stoll with it. Stoll puts up the shot. It's partially blocked. Wyomenes comes out of there with it. Clark on the move. Here's a 15-footer from the right. Elbow is good by Blackburn. And it's a 7-0 run by Wyomenes right now in the final 10 seconds of the quarter. And Collins, like I said, Blackburn all over, making it, uh, making Collins work hard to get it up the floor. But she know the clock. She beats the buzzer, and she can't hit the shot. At the end of one, your score. It's Wyoming East 15, Princeton 6. Take a break, come back, get you ready for the second quarter here on Video Productions. State Ford, where every deal is a big John deal. Northside Drive, Route 19 in Summersville. Come see why people from all over the great state of West Virginia are making the drive to Summersville. Incredible deals on brand new Fords. The state's guaranteed lowest price on brand new F-150s, Super Duties, and more. Plus, incredible service after the sale at Mid-State Ford. Northside Drive, right off of Route 19 in Summersville. Online anytime at MidStateFordWV.com. Little Caesar's stuffed crazy crust is stuffed with cheese and has a delicious buttery garlic flavored crust. And it's $9.49, making it the lowest price in stuffed crust. And I'm out of time. There was more time. Pizza, pizza. Grab the one thing that everyone's loving. And as it happens, they come by the dozen. Everybody loves it. And everybody knows it. Everybody loves a donut. As we start the second quarter, Wyoming East is on a 7-0 run, and Bill, Wyoming East enjoys their largest lead of the ball game right here at 15-6 as we do start quarter number two. Katie Blackburn with eight points leading the Lady Warriors, and in fact, she has outscored the entire Princeton team to this point. So Wyoming East will have first crack at it here in the second quarter. Maddie Clark to put the ball in play, and we are ready to go. So Wyoming East, they get the ball down low. Nice power move. Shot up, doesn't go a little too strong. That time that shot was put up by Price. And boy, she had great low post position and just not able to finish with the shot. Here's Stahl with it for the Lady Tigers. Wyoming East currently on a 7 0 run going back into that first quarter. Stahl kind of forces the shot and it's rejected. Really good defense by Price. Back the other way. It's Wyoming East. Pass into the corner. Lusk dials it up from three. It doesn't go. Offensive rebound. The putback is up and in. That's a beautiful play that time by Price. So Price being inserted into the lineup, making her presence felt. Nine-nothing run for Wyoming East going back to the first quarter. Biggest lead of the game right here. Stall into traffic. And this time she will draw the foul and get to the line. And that's kind of Price. So where she scored on the other end of the floor, and then she commits the foul here. So the price was right on one end, but not right on the other end. I knew you were going to say that. You knew that. We've just been together too long. Yeah, Maddie stole at the line. She'll shoot a pair. And first free throw is good. And that will break a 9 nothing run. Now you got wholesale changes for Wyoming East. You know, you're very fortunate, Bill, if you are a coach and you're able to make Wholesale changes like that where you can bring in four new players at one time. Second free throw for Stoll is good. She got them both. 
Abby Baker is in, Gabby Cameron, a couple of the new players for the Warriors. Maddie Clark with it now. And she'll set up the play. It's interesting that you say, talking about the shoes, Clark's got one pink shoe and one blue shoe on. Hmm. Maybe she dressed in the dark. To the <laughs> 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 she put on her shoes. <laughs> they scramble for the loose ball. Clark comes out of there with it. Clark down the lane. There's a drive to Cameron. Nice pass inside from Monroe. And Monroe with a nice catch, shoot, and score. You know, Bill, I guess it really doesn't matter what color shoes you wear. If you could perform, it don't matter, right? That's it. Well, you know the shoe business. Yeah, one time that used to be my thing back in another life. Collins in trouble, gets it to stall. As you remember, Bill, when we were doing games on radio, and there's a foul. And I knew the shoe size of just about every player that Beckley, every player on Beckley's team, and almost every player that Beckley played against. Well, that's because, and many of you know that Maris Lowry and the family, Lowry Shoes and Sporting Goods on City Avenue in Beckley, they supplied many of the shoes for many of the teams over the years, and so Maris was the man who made that happen. In fact, when you and I hooked up doing broadcasting, I did that because you knew all the teams, all the players, all the coaches. Boy, Wyoming East defense, they really turned it up a notch, making it real difficult for Princeton. Princeton's have difficult just making passes, let alone trying to get the ball in the basket. And that's one thing, and there is an illegal screen. And that's one thing, uh, Bill, we talked about that was going to pick up in the second quarter. The Wyoming defense, the intensity, I think, on the defensive end of the floor for the Lady Warriors has picked up. You're exactly right about that. You're so, first exactly right today. <laughs> yeah, I got one right. Now I got an exactly, exactly right. right. <laughs> We're I'm keeping right, track. I'm writing that down, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Wyoming East with a chance to perhaps add to their lead. Coming up on five and a half for the opening half. Clark off the dribble. Makes a pass. There's a nice attack to the basket. Count if it goes, it goes. And it'll be a chance for a three-point play for Baker, the basket maker. <laughs> Baker looked good on this one. A little yep. dipsy doodle. Yep. That's an Owen, a little dipsy doodle, huh? Yes, sir. And Baker trying to polish off a three-point play, and she cannot. But there's Monroe with an offensive rebound, and we got a held ball, and the possession arrow will put it toward Princeton. The biggest lead of the game is right here at 21 to 8, five and a half to go here in the first half. Wyoming East is intense, and here's the Pepsi replay. Yeah, Monroe. Wow. Here's a steal. Clark goes in and draws the foul. Clark with the steal and then goes in and gets the hoop and the harm, and we'll try to polish off a three point play in the biggest lead of the game right here at 15. Three Once more again, substitutions coming in for the Lady Warriors. It looked like that Clark just swiped a Pepsi, huh? No, right out of a case. That was mine. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> why you're going thirsty. That's right. She saw blue, she swiped it. Yes, Maddie Clark will try to polish off a three-point play, and she cannot. But Wyoming East able to keep it alive. A lost shot is swatted, but it'll stay with Wyoming East. Again, you got to like the way the Lady Warriors, uh, you used the word, Maris, intense, and that's exactly what's happening on both ends. Yeah, and you know, if you're Princeton, you have to be really frustrated. That's two free throws in a row that Wyoming East has missed and yet still got the offensive rebound. Clark puts it on the deck, gets into the lane, and they'll call her for traveling. So on the turnover, Princeton will get it, and Princeton will take a full timeout. We'll take it with them, 5-14 for the half. Biggest lead of the game right here at 15, 23 to 8 in favor of Wyoming East. We'll be right back here on Video Productions. And we welcome you back to the Raleigh County Convention Center. I'm Maris Lowry with Bill O'Brien. Have the heavy hitter, Mr. Nick Eskins, producing and directing. And the brains of the outfit, Faith Alexander, has made it here to courtside. Andrew Bolin on camera along with Jackie Moon. Well, Bill, coming up next will be these same two schools on the boys' game, and you'll have that. And that should be quite a game between Princeton and Wyoming East on the boys' side. You know, I think it will. I've already done my homework, and uh, 
I think both these teams match up very well. So have you turned your homework in yet? I have not. I'll turn that in uh, in about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It'll be Wawanese ball, I do believe. Or did I get that? No. It will be Princeton's ball, I beg your pardon. There you go. Well, I knew I could only have a chance of being 50% right. You're exactly <laughs> wrong. <That's laughs> I was on that one, wasn't I? <laughs> Glad you're with us here on video, video production here this afternoon. Biggest lead of the game right here at 15, coming up on the five-minute mark. And we've got a turnover and then a foul. And like I said, the difference between the way the game started and the way the game's being played now is Wyoming East has really turned it up on the defensive end of the floor. Well, so far, the Lady Tigers have scored a grand total of two points in this quarter. We're three minutes yeah, deep into right, it. Right, three minutes in. You're right, Bill. Like I said, the defensive end is what has led to the good offense for Wyoming East. Here's a pass to the corner, and they dribble it out of bounds, and it'll be a Wyoming East turnover. That time the pass led Blackburn just a little too far, and as she caught it, she dribbled it on the inline, or the baseline, I should say. Either is acceptable. I'm glad. I'm Good to know. Yes. Yes. So if I put that on the test, I can get – I can. I, that's a right answer either way. Correct. correct. Uh, All of the above. Like. Correct Amundo. Here's Princeton with it. They just have, they've been kind of stuck on eight into the lane. A tough shot, and it goes. That's a nice play that time for Wright, and that time Wright was right. So here's Maddie Clark calling a play. They went in a little weave to get the ball in the low post right of the lane. Pass into the lane. little short shot is good. That's a nice play that time as Price able to score again. Equals the largest lead. Back to 15. Halfway point of quarter number two. Here's a turnover. Blackburn over to Lusk. Nowhere to go. Lusk will back it out. Three ball from the corner. Good. Lusk drains a three. Kaboom. A splashdown. And now the biggest lead of the game here at 18. And there's a foul on Lusk in the backcourt. Lusk has hit two long balls today. And good hustle by her and her teammates. And once again, Bill, as I mentioned, when you're able to run players in like Wyoming East can, first of all, you stay fresh. Most teams don't have the luxury to be able to switch three and four players at a time the way Wyoming East has been able to do here. That shows you got a pretty deep team if you're, you know, able to do that. And Coach Davison having confidence in no matter who he puts into the ball game. But this 18-point lead is the largest of the game here this afternoon. Three and a half to go to halftime. And Stoll was in trouble and just gets it away. Hurt has it now. There's a drive on the right baseline. Tough angle. The shot doesn't go. But it's rebounded by Princeton that was stole, and they turn it over. But it's just been a suffering defense. Uh, Wyoming East has really put the clamps down on Princeton here toward the end of the first quarter, all into this entire second quarter. There's a pass knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Wyoming East. Coming up at halftime, we will recap this first half. We'll go inside the numbers. We'll tell you what's already happened and the other games to come here in day number two of this tournament. There's a bucket by Wyoming East. I was screened out. I didn't quite catch who scored that. that. Too. But it's a 20-point lead for Wyoming East. Biggest lead of the game right here. Of course, we'll catch that when we get the official uh, numbers here at halftime. <clears throat> so I beg your pardon. Whoever that was, I could not see. I'm going to give it to Gabby Cameron. We'll check. That's why I say Wyoming should have wore their white uniforms. <laughs> but as good as they're playing in gray, they probably probably keep playing in gray. Uh -huh. Here's Clark on the right baseline. Throws the ball back out, and that's a travel. She took a little bunny hop before she put that shot up. In the pea patch. Yeah. Yes, or the carrot patch. Yeah, whichever. Yeah, I got my Bugs Bunny in this morning, Bill. Both are acceptable. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's how I started my day with cartoons. Here's a turnover. Nice. And we got a whistle and a Princeton foul. You know what uh, Sarver was doing after she had her pocket picked? She grabbed the defender's foot.
to make sure that there wasn't going to be a fast break. Well, there's going to be free throws. Yeah. Well, there's going to be free throws, though, because Princeton's over the limit. Yep. That's the fifth team foul here in the second quarter. So 20-point advantage for Wyoming needs the biggest lead of the ball game, and it'll be Blackburn, the junior, at the free throw line. She'll shoot a pair. She's played well for Wyoming East here this afternoon as she makes the first of two. Nine points total for Blackburn, including two for two foul shooting. Yeah, it's an eight nothing run right now for the Lady Warriors. Blackburn sets, second free throw, looks good, and then she got them both. 22 point advantage. And that was a Wyoming East foul. And that's on Blackburn. That'll be the team's fourth. So that's side out, common foul. Wyoming East ready to dip back into its bench. Like I said, three players in. Good job by Coach Davidson, like I said, able to shuffle in, you know, fresh players in and out of the lineup. And not just players, but players that actually contribute. Oh, yeah. You know, give you quality minutes. Interchangeable. That's a very good word. Thank you. So here's Collins with it. They get the ball to Stull. Stull, a double teamer in the paint. And what do we got? We got a held ball. Possession over to Wyoming East. Little General shows the replay here. Yep, Watch see. this defense. Yep, just nowhere for Stoll to go. In fact, it's, you're right, Bill, the defense, the defender there turned her in inside to another defender, nowhere to go as Wyoming East calls a timeout. Quick 30-second timeout. We'll be right back in 30 seconds here on Video Productions. When you're repping the blue and gold, staying ready is key. That's why we hit up Little General Stores, our go-to when the clock is ticking. At LG, they're hustling to cover your daily needs, fueling you both on and off the court. From the finest snacks to a team that's always ready to assist, Little General Stores is the ultimate stop. You can rest easy knowing LG has all your essentials. Little General Stores, your road's neighbor. Find out more at lgstores.com. The heavy hitter, Mr. Nick Eskins, producing and directing here this afternoon. Andrew Bolin and Jackie Moon on camera with Bill O'Brien, I'm Mara Slowry, 159 bill for the half. And it's really been all Wyoming East, especially in this second quarter, as Princeton's only been able to muster up four points here in quarter number two. And again, it's that smothering defense that the Lady Warriors are using. So out of the timeout, Wyoming East has it. Clark calls out the play. It's like maybe a high ball screen. And Clark turns the corner, attacks the basket, and she'll draw the foul and get to the line. That was a nice set play right out of the timeout. It really was. And Maris, you know, you've, you've mentioned a couple of times about the substituting for Wyoming East. And because of the fresh players, they're able to play defense so hard. And that replay brought to you by New River Community and Technical College. Six year for this great event. Mike Green and his staff have done an outstanding job. By the way, between the Beckley games tonight, I don't know if Dr. Uh, Copenhagen knows, but she'll be my interview in between the Beckley boys and girls game tonight. At least I was told that by Mike Green. I haven't had a chance to go over there and talk to Dr. Copenhagen. I'll do that at the conclusion of this game. Back the other way is the layup by Lusk. Eight points for her. Now we've got a football score at 35 to 10. <laughs> Collins having a tough time under the pressure getting the ball up the floor. And there will be a foul on Wyoming East. Now Wyoming East over the limit, and Princeton will get to the line. But, Bill, you made a point when we start the game, and you're right. You know, 4A is Princeton, and double A is Wyoming East. And you can see that if you have the right number of good players, it doesn't really matter, I guess, how big or how small your school is. Because I think if you can play, you can play. And there's a lot of good players that come from these smaller schools. No doubt about it. You know, I've always – Love the state of Indiana, the Hoosiers. You know, there's just no classes. Everybody plays. Of course, I think the biggest thing of why I, I, I don't think that might be a good idea in West Virginia because there's so many rural areas here in West Virginia is at the free throw line is uh, Bain, Bree Bain. She missed the first one. Second free throw is good. She gets one of two. But I think that's the biggest reason, obviously, why they've gone to four classes because – of the rural areas in West Virginia. Here is a shot for Wyoming East. That shot is no good by Lusk. The putback is no good. Battle for the loose ball. Wyoming East has it. So getting ready to go up under a minute here for the first half, which has been all Wyoming East. 
Blackburn's had a good game. Lucky 13. Run like a little weave right now. Blackburn a little floater into the lane and is able to score. That was nice. Yep, you can definitely tell they practiced that. 12 points for Katie Blackburn. It's been a tough afternoon for Stull and for the rest of the Lady Tigers as that shot comes up a little short. Back the other way, Lusk on the move. And the ball's loose down on the floor. And Wyoming East had two girls going for it, and that will constitute as a travel. Absolutely. Well, we're down to 22 seconds left, and we'll have all of the official stats at intermission. Yep, we'll go over the, uh, like I said, the halftime numbers. We'll also tell you about what already happened and what's coming up later this evening into the night. Here's a wild shot off the glass up and in. That was a tough shot. When I said wild, it looked like it was going to be tough by Bain. And Bain able to connect. Last shot time for Wyoming. He's just ahead of the halftime buzzer. It doesn't go. And that's the end of the first half. At the end of the first half, it's all Wyoming East. Your score, the Lady Warriors lead the Lady Tigers of Princeton 37-13. to We'll take a first halftime break. We'll come back and recap and get you the numbers as you're watching live streaming coverage of the 2024 New River CTC Invitational being presented by Little General Stores here on Video Productions. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. And we welcome you back to the Raleigh County Convention Center with Bill O'Brien, I'm Maris Lowry at the break. It's been all Wyoming East as they lead 37 to 13. They led 15 to 6 at the end of the quarter. In fact, the game was tied at 2, and then after that, it's been all Wyoming East. Princeton cut it to 8 to 6, but as I mentioned, 15 to 6 at the end of the quarter, and then the lead continued to balloon in that second quarter, and largely in part of the defense bill in which Wyoming East played. You know, the offense was there, but they were led by the defense, and, you know, they hold Princeton to only six points in the first quarter and only seven in the second. Well, that's right, and uh, Wyoming East has just been very aggressive, and they're more than just uh, five players, as we've mentioned. You know, they can go to their bench and not lose a thing. Well, that's it, and, you know, it's a, it's a luxury for Coach Davison at Wyoming East to be able to have interchangeable parts, as you mentioned, just to be able to substitute as freely as he did in that first half. And every girl that came in really played quality minutes, and it's given Wyoming East this big lead, 37-13. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Bill will have numbers for you. He'll have team and individual totals, and we'll do that on the flip side on the other end of the break here on Video Productions. When you're repping the blue and gold, staying ready is key. That's why we hit up Little General Stores, our go-to when the clock is ticking. At LG, they're hustling to cover your daily needs, fueling you both on and off the court. From the finest snacks to a team that's always ready to assist, Little General Stores is the ultimate stop. You can rest easy knowing LG has all your essentials. Little General Stores, your road's neighbor. Find out more at lgstores.com. You have a goal. You know what you want. Start with us. New River Community and Technical College, your community college. Take classes online or in a classroom in Beaver, Lewisburg, Summersville, or Princeton. Or step outside the classroom in one of our technical or health programs. Find flexible and affordable options to help you reach your goal. It's closer than you think when you start with us. New River Community and Technical College. Apply today. I heard every time you order Little Caesars during the Pizza Pizza pregame, you score a fun perk. And I heard Justin Jefferson is the most handsome receiver of all time. Yeah, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. No, I heard people say it. Order pizza and Pepsi online on game day for a chance to win Super Bowl 58 tickets. Pizza Pizza. Hey, grab me one too. 
Duncan is here with your holiday helpers. Peppermint mocha and toasted white chocolate signature lattes. A touch of delicious holiday magic to help you seize the season. Sip through the holidays with signature lattes at Duncan. America runs on Duncan. And we welcome you back to the sixth annual New River Community and Technical College Invitational being presented by Little General Stores with Bill O'Brien, I'm Maris Lowry, and at the break, in this girls' contest, it's been all Wyoming East. They beat Princeton 37-13. And, Bill, you have the numbers to how the score got that way. Okay, Maris, these are official. And let's go for Princeton first. And let's take a look at the individual point totals. They're going to go this way. Two points for Kaylee Wright. Two points for Maddie Stull. Two points for Asia Collins. Three points for Bree Bain. And Addison Sarver leads the team in scoring with a grand total of four points. So that's it. Not a lot of scoring for the Princeton Tigers. For Wyoming East, they've done a lot better. Katie Blackburn with 12 points. Kendall Lusk has eight. Maddie Clark with five. Abby Baker has four. Charlie Price with two. Kenna Price has two. Olivia Monroe, two. And Gabby Cameron has two points. They got eight players in the scorebook. As far as team totals go for Princeton, they only hit 5 of 11, only had 11 shots at the goal in the entire first half. That's 45.5%. From downtown, well, they tried once and missed it. And from the foul line, 3 out of 5, 60%. Meantime, for Wyoming East, they had 26 shots at the hoop, making 15. That's 58%. So the difference is 26 shots attempted versus 11 shots attempted for Princeton. As far as three-point land, Wyoming East able to make three out of seven. That is 43%. And from the foul line, four of seven, that's 57%. One other thing is because of that terrific defense that Wyoming East has thrown up, Princeton has 13 turnovers. So there you go. Those are the halftime stats. And you know, Bill, when you play the kind of terrific defense, as you mentioned, that Wyoming East plays, when you do that, and then you also shoot right at 60% from the floor. That equation equals victory in more times than not. So we'll take a break, come back, get you ready for the second half. It's a 37-13 lead for Wyoming East over Princeton. We'll be right back here on Video Productions. Ready to steer your career in a new direction? Look no further than New River Community and Technical College. With brand new simulators and virtual reality equipment, New River CTC's Commercial Driver's License Program provides on-the-road experience before ever getting behind the wheel. You can become road ready by earning your CDL in just six weeks, along with a 180-hour certificate. Whatever your dream, New River CTC's CDL program puts you on the route to success. Don't wait. Apply now. Let them ask you how you make this hard, dirty, wet, freezing, sweltering, exhilarating job look so easy. While they're wondering, you'll be doing. Because you can. Because it's there to be done. Because you have the will and the way. We are Bobcat. 
And we welcome you back to the Raleigh County Convention Center with Bill O'Brien. I'm Maris Lowry, the heavy hitter, Mr. Nick Eskins, producing and directing, directing here this afternoon. Also, the brains of the outfit, Faith Alexander on hand. And we have Jackie Moon on camera along with Andrew Boland. Well, Bill, we had one game already played this afternoon in a girls game. Bluefield beat Shady 47-34. And, of course, the game that will follow this, as I mentioned, it will be the same two schools, but it will be a boys game between Princeton and Wyoming East. And that will tip at approximately 450. Then at 615 tonight, Eric and I will have a boys battle between Beckley. They'll play host to Musselman. And then the nightcap, a girls game, Eric and I will have Beckley and Spring Valley. And, of course... The question of the day is, where is Musselman? It's in the Eastern Panhandle. Near Martinsburg, absolutely. Yes. And, of course, they're known for their apple orchards. And they are the Applemen. That's it. And they wear green and red, look like Christmas. And they are AAA. Or well, 4A. 4A. Yeah, quad A now. Yeah. And, you know, that is really confusing because, you know, in football, the 3A teams have become 4A, but now – Starting with next year, everybody in all sports are now going to be 4A. There are no more 3A in this and 4A in that. You're either single, double, triple, or 4A. So whether people agree, disagree, that's just the way it is. Absolutely right. There's the warning buzzer. We're ready for the second half, and it's 37-13. to 13. It's been all Wyoming East so far. And for the second half play-by-play, -play, once again, here's my sidekick, Maris Lowry. Thank you very much, Bill. And we are ready to start half number two. Wyoming East led 15 to 6 at the end of the quarter and the lead now the biggest as it's been is 37 to 13 and Princeton will have the first possession of the second half. So glad you're with us here on Video Productions. All games here on Video Productions this week in the 6th annual New River CTC Invitational being presented by Little General Stores. So here's Princeton with first crack at it. Starting half at number two. And it was been tough slain, only 13 points. Only got six in the first quarter and only seven in the second. They get the ball inside. A little short baseline shot a little strong that time. And it's out of bounds. It'll stay with Princeton. Is That was Sarver that missed the initial shot. And then Kaylee Wright tried to follow it up. Ball comes into Collins. Sarver with it down low, puts up the shot, doesn't go. Battle for the rebound, and out of bounds, it'll stay with Princeton. Well, the Lady Tigers, there's no quit in them, but they've got a big, deep hole to shovel out of. Yeah, they really do. I think if you're Princeton, Bill, I think is there's Hurt dialing up a three. It doesn't go, and the rebound comes out to Blackburn. Long pass ahead to Lusk. Lusk will catch it in stride and lay it up and in. That was the thing of beauty right there for Wyoming East. Lusk with 10 points. Here's Clark with the steal. Clark down the lane, passes over to Blackburn. Blackburn knocks it down. 14 for her. But yeah, what I was going to say, Bill, is Princeton, you're right, they got to dig out of a big hole and they just as they throw it away. And they're not going to come. They're not going to catch up doing that. <laughs> no, again, they're trying to to rush it, and you know the Warriors' defense is just so smothering. Yeah, if you're Princeton, you just got to forget the score and just try to maybe play in increments here. Maybe how you like that big word? I like it. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, that means they got to get a couple stops and score a couple of baskets. But it's been difficult on both ends of the floor here this afternoon for Princeton, and Wyoming East has had everything to do with that. Here's Monroe into the lane. Puts up the shot, needs a roll, doesn't go. And Stahl will clear the rebound for Princeton. Sarver now in the front court for the Lady Tigers. Sarver makes her move to the basket. They cut her off, and she throws it away. And we got to throw the ball's tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Wyoming East. Wyoming East entered the ball game 8-2. and two. Princeton entered the game 6-1. and one. Of course, Bill told you earlier, Wyoming East double-A, Princeton a 4-A. Wyoming East won the double-A state championship a year ago. Princeton did qualify for the 4-A state tournament. They get the ball inside of Monroe. Now back out, Clark will dial it up from three. And Hurt had, had it for a minute and then lost it over to Lusk for Wyoming East. These same two schools will play in the next game, in a boys' game. It'll be Wyoming East and Princeton. 
Here's Clark from the corner and needs a roll and doesn't get it. And here's Maddie Stull with the rebound. Over to Asia Collins. And yep. Collins traveled. Trying to push that pass just a little bit harder and took the extra step. Turnovers, that's been a problem, one of the problems for the Lady Tigers. And Gabby Cameron will check into the lineup before Wyoming East. So Wyoming East looking to make a run, Bill. I'm sure that uh, they'll be one of the teams to beat in the Class AA, trying to defend their title, trying to get back to Charleston. Ball's knocked out of bounds. And, you know, we're just really r right at the halfway point for them. You know, they played 22 games. This is game number 11 for Wyoming East. So as far as, you know, they are, this is their, uh, like I said, at the halfway point is Wyoming East turns the ball over, or I thought they did. Maybe the ball went off of Princeton. I thought it hit off of the girl of Wyoming East. Apparently not. You know, it's interesting with uh, head coach Ryan Davidson in his first year taking over for a legend, and they just haven't stopped. Three is good by Blackburn. Her second long ball. Collins will put up a little runner, needs a roll, it won't go. They battle for the rebound, and we'll have a jump ball, a held ball, possession arrow to Wyoming East. Katie Blackburn with 17 points so far today for the Warriors. You know, Maddie Clark came in leading the team in scoring at 15, and she's had a good game, but she hasn't had to be able, you know, she hasn't had to carry the team offensively. If you're a coach, that's the way you want it. You want other people to contribute. Right, and they've been able to do that, like I said, the way they've been able to substitute so freely here this afternoon. And they're working the ball around the horn. Whoops. And they throw it away. There you go. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> That's a technical term. Yes. Yeah. Well, we knew what it meant. <laughs> it equal to turnover on that, on that possession. <laughs> Here's Sarver with it for Princeton. She's going to take it all the way, put up a short shot, doesn't go. And, whoa. yeah, she gets in there and tries to rip the rebound away. And that good hustle will keep it with Princeton. I guess as a color commentator, I've got to use more than one word phrases. <laughs> Hurt shot is blocked. You know, Bill, we're coming up on the halfway point of the third quarter. And Princeton hadn't scored yet in this third quarter. It was 37 to 13 at the half, 44 13 now, and we are halfway through the third. There's a nice drive and laying in, and Bill trying to teach you to use the monitor. Abby Baker a, scores. Yes. You don't have to, like, bob and weave around the referee. Just look at the monitor. I just cannot get used to that. I'm going to get you used to that by the end of the week. I hope. And then we won't have it no more the yeah. rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> by the time you learn it, we won't have it anymore. <laughs> oh, man. Are we having fun yet? Oh, uh, we are. We are. Three and a half to go here in the third. I don't think Princeton's having much fun. Nope. Not when you're on the 40, uh, you're on the uh, short end of a 46 to 13 score. And here's what we're talking about. You know, three for three substitution as we've watched the uh, Little Caesars Pizza instant replay. Little Caesars Pizza, the official pizza of the National Football League. And Abby Baker got the lay in there. <laughs> here's Clark off a couple of screens. Nice feed right down the lane. The shot put up doesn't go. And the young lady, boy, I think she took a spill there. And uh, that was Price. Yeah, Kenna Price. Ouch. And the ball's out of bounds, though, to Wyoming East. And Blackburn off a couple of screens. That's the one thing, Wyoming East. They got so many girls that, that can do so much. And here's Blackburn dialing up from downtown. Doesn't go. Ball's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Wyoming East. Now Princeton is going to have multiple substitutions. They're going to go five for five. Yeah, let's see what well, we can do. Mullins is one of the girls in for Princeton. Oh, I said these girls with long hair, it covers up their number. There's a three ball straight away. It's good by Lusk. 13 for her. 
12 nothing runs here in this quarter. Princeton yet to score here in quarter number three. And we've played over five minutes. Mm. Five and a half minutes. And like I said, Princeton still stuck on 13. Here's Price into the ball game now for Princeton. So we'll check some of the other players. That's Mullins, 21. Yeah, Bain in there, and that shot was put up and in. And that way, uh, finally, Princeton able to score as here comes uh, Mullins out of there with it for Princeton. Mullins tacks the basket, puts up the shot. It doesn't go. There's the put back up and in. And put back by Honaker. Here's Clark on the drive. And Wyoming will set a play. Clark on the drive, the ball's knocked out of bounds. It will stay with Wyoming East. You know, the Princeton coach, Matt Smith, he had to do something to get his team on the scoreboard, so he put in five new players, and they're doing pretty good. Lusk will dial up a three, and she's fouled, so it'll be three shots for Lusk. Allie Parks, just into the lineup, was credited with committing the foul for the Lady Tigers. So Kendall Lusk, a sophomore for Wyoming East, will shoot three. First and foul shooting today. She's hit three trays so far and has 13 points. Three chances to hit the half-century mark, and she doesn't need all three. She hits the half-century mark on the first one. Second free throw, none but net. And let's see if third time's a charm. I don't want to jinx her, but the way she shot those first two, I don't think I can. So you're thinking she'll make it, huh? I'm thinking she'll make it. If she shoots the this third one the way she shot the first two, and it goes in. So she got all three. Told you, she shot too good for me to jinx her. There you go. Here's Princeton with it. There's Bain with it now. She's trapped in a corner, and we got a foul on Wyoming East. And that will be the first foul of the quarter. Well, our next game will be coming up, and it'll be a boys game between these two schools, Princeton and Wyoming East, and that is scheduled to start at 4.30. We'll be on at 4.15 with our pregame show. I'll have the play-by-play -play for that one, and then the two Beckley teams will play the two late games today, and Maris will have both those. Yep, Eric Thomas will join me for the late games. There's a turnover, a travel. Actually, it won't be a turnover because the arrow will be in Princeton's favor. But, yeah, Eric Thomas will join me for the Beckley and a Musselman game that will tip at 6.15. That's a boys game. Then the girls game, Eric and I will have Beckley and Spring Valley. You know, the Beckley girls team just came back of a long trip over the weekend. There's a runner is no good, and it'll stay with Princeton. Beckley lost a couple of tough games. They lost to Lindsley and to John Marshall in that tournament uh, last Friday and Saturday. Up in the uh, northern panhandle. Yes, yes. Here's a shot into the lane, needs a roll, it doesn't go. Battle for the rebound, and we'll have a foul, and it'll be a Princeton foul. It was Emma Harmon wearing number 12 on her blue outfit into the ball game for the Lady Tigers. Almost got that one to fall in. That's only the second team foul on Princeton. Well, I mean, he's only committed one team foul. And now the Warriors will inbound, and now as soon as I say one team foul, <laughs> make it another team foul. <laughs> but the one thing, and Bill, like we've talked in all the other games we've done, with the new rule this year, we just, which has been great, we don't have as many free throws as what we used to have when you had teams committing seven fouls at the end of one quarter and we shot free throws for an entire quarter. Now that it's just five per quarter and we start all over again, that's made it, I think it's made the games flow much better. No doubt about it. Turnover. So it'll go to Princeton. And here's the Lady Tigers with it on the attack. And it's Bain with it. Bain makes your move. Ball's knocked free and out of bounds. And it'll stay with Princeton. Wyoming East will make some wholesale changes. Monroe back into the ball game. Let's see who else is out there. K 
Cameron into the ball game for Wyoming East. Also into the Wyoming East lineup is Baker. Pass down low, shot up, needs a roll, won't go for Princeton. Ball knocked out of bounds over to Wyoming East. The next game will be a boys match between these two schools. Here's Baker with it for Wyoming East. Cameron with it now. Got a foul. And that'll be the fourth team foul, so still not shots. Ooh, food. Thank you, Sammy. So it'll be Wyoming East Clark to put the ball in play under her own basket. She does to Monroe. Monroe puts up the short shot. It doesn't go. And Princeton comes out of there with the rebound. There's Mullins with it. Last 30 seconds of the third. There's a runner from the baseline. Good. That's a good-looking shot that time by Parks. Back the other way, Clark whips the pass. Baker scores. So just like that, Wyoming East right back at you. I think it's safe to save the last 10 seconds, the last shot time for <laughs> Princeton. Honecker, here's passing. Parks for three. Yeah. It doesn't go, and that's the end of quarter number three. At the end of three, it's Wyoming East 54 and Princeton 19. Back with the fourth quarter right after this on Video Productions. Every time you order Little Caesars during the Pizza Pizza pregame, you score a fun perk. And I heard Justin Jefferson is the most handsome receiver of all time. Yeah, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. No, I heard people say it. Order pizza and Pepsi online on game day for a chance to win Super Bowl 58 tickets. Pizza Pizza. Take me home, country road. 105.9 WTNJ. And we're headed to the fourth quarter here at the Raleigh County Convention Center with Bill O'Brien, I, Maris, Lowry, and Bill, it's been all Wyoming East. The game was tied one time at 2-2, two to two, and that's it. So Wyoming East has virtually led uh, wire to wire. As we start the fourth quarter, they lead 54-19. to 19. Princeton has just not been able to score much. They had six points in the first quarter, seven in the second, six points in that third quarter for their 19. Meantime, East had 15, 22, and 17 point quarters. So Princeton will have the first possession to start quarter number four. And Wyoming East with this big lead at 54-19. And let's see what Princeton will do with it on their first possession. Mullins with it now. I think if you're Princeton, you just want to forget the score. Keep playing hard, which we know they will. And let's see maybe if you can win this quarter. I think that would be the goal for Princeton, just try to win this fourth quarter. There's a running drive. There's a foul on the shot, and that'll be a couple of free throws coming. Honaker made a nice move that time, about 10 feet right of the, of the basket. So that's Katie Blackburn's third personal foul for the Lady Warriors. Honaker at the line to shoot a pair. First free throw is no good. Three more games to follow this. Honaker ready, second free throw on its way, and she missed them both. And Wyoming East comes out of there with the rebound. And here's Clark in the front court. Here's Baker with it. And they turn it over, and then they get it back. And now we've got, got a battle for the ball, and we got, what do we got here? we got a foul, I believe. Abby Baker wasn't going to take any prisoners there. She was just wanting that ball. So it'll be a Princeton foul. That'll be their first foul of the fourth quarter. 
Third foul on Alley Parks. Here's Clark on the drive. They cut her off. Clark now drives to the basket, puts it up and in. Maddie Clark able to score. Normally she gets 15 a game. She's now got seven in this one. Right. Like I said, they really haven't needed her offensive output, but she does so many other things on the floor for this Wyoming East group. Princeton will throw it away. But it all starts on the defensive end, and when you have, when you can play eight players, nine players the way Wyoming East has been able to do, and they all contribute like they've been able to do, it just makes everything a whole lot easier. And I realize every game may not be like this, but uh, when they start getting in some of the more, you know, the challenging part of their well, schedule. Right. Or, well, and, I, and I think I think Princeton's a really good team. Just today didn't seem to be their day. Uh, I think that this is not a reflection of Princeton or who they are as uh, Connor checks into the game. Princeton is a much better team than what we saw here this afternoon. And I think Princeton's going to be a team that will challenge to make the girls' state tournament for a second year in a row. Connor loses it. Monroe has it, gets it to Clark. Clark ahead of the field will go in and lay it in. Biggest lead of the game right here at 58-19. Two minutes into the fourth quarter. And you can see Wyoming East ready to put in five new players. And we got a Wyoming East foul. Little reach in that time by Abby Baker. That's so her fourth. We're going to have to dig up uh, the entire roster here. Well, actually, they got, like I said, they've got so many movable parts. Martin into the ball game for the first time for Wyoming East. We've got some newcomers that have already played back in there. And we'll tell you who they are as we, as we go along. Here's Princeton. Three ball put up by Connor is no good. Long rebound ran down that time by Honaker. Shot is blocked by Honaker. And a little short shot is up and in, and that shot is made by Bain. So back the other way, here we come with Wyoming East. There's a new player, as I mentioned, Martin into the ball game. Kylie Martin, a sophomore for Wyoming East. Wyoming East with this nice little, I don't know what you, it's not really a stall, but they really work the ball around. And we've got a held ball. The arrow will keep with Wyoming East. Worked it into Charlie Price, and she was a collapsed upon, but you know, this Princeton team, they're not quitting. And as you say, their goal is just to play well here in the fourth quarter. Abby Wood will check into the Princeton lineup. Ball comes in. Lusk will dial it up for three and hit. Three ball by Lusk here on the near side corner. That is her fourth long ball success. Biggest lead of the game right here at 40. Back the other way is a three by Princeton. That three ball was put up by Parks. No good. Wood has it and throws it away. Wyoming East on the move. There is a Princeton foul. So four and a half to go in this one, a 40-point game. Coming up next will be the boys' version of this between Princeton and Wyoming East. Well, Maris, in our wrap-up show, we'll have all of the stats, plus we'll have the Pepsi Cola player of the game or players of the game. September Belcher is checking into the ball game. September and January. <laughs> So, Bill, be thinking of who's going to win the Pepsi player of the game. Now, we can give away three. We can give away Pepsi, a Diet Pepsi, and a Pepsi Zero. So we can actually have, because as many girls that have played really well for Wyoming East, there would be more than one girl deserving of the Pepsi Cola Award. Well, I got two right now. Well, you need to come up with a third one. <laughs> I'm putting it all on you, well, partner. thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> well, okay. I... Whatever you say goes with me. So if you say these are the three girls that win the Pepsi player of the game, who am I to say that's not the case? 
Coming up on the halfway point of the fourth quarter. <laughs> 40-point lead for the Lady Warriors of Wyoming East. They've looked really good here today. Yes, they have. But like I said, I think this is not indicative of who Princeton is, more of maybe who Wyoming East is than more of it who Princeton is. There's a shot right of the lane. That's too strong. That shot was put up by Sarver, and it's out of bounds to Wyoming East. So Wyoming East gets this win, Bill. They're going to go to 9-2. and two. Princeton's going to go to 6-2. and two. I'm guessing with a 40-point advantage, that East is going to win this game. Just guessing. Well, I don't think you'd have to guess. We're under four minutes for the game. Like I said, Wyoming East scored the first bucket, two to nothing. Princeton tied it at two, and then from that point on, it's been all Wyoming East. They led 15 to six at the quarter, 37-13 at the break, 54-19 at the end of three, and 61-21, 40-point advantage with three and a half to go here in the ball game. There's a nice catch, shoot, but they were not able to score. And back the other way, here comes Wyoming East. Martin in the front court. Lost it. Ball, uh, play play kind of get a little sloppy there. Yeah, as yeah. Players starting we, to kind of dive in and reach in for the ball. You know, Maris, uh, as we're looking at a couple of substitutions coming in, Lake and Burner is one of those for Princeton. But, you know, the Tigers came in with a record of seven uh, of six and one. I mean, they've only lost one game this year, so obviously tonight or this afternoon is not indicative of this team. Right. Carly Russell into the ball game for Wyoming East. And that is September Belcher. Wonder if her birthday's in September. Maybe that's how she got the name. Or maybe her mom's favorite month. Could be, could be, it could be her mom's favorite month because that's when she was born. Yeah, it could be. All right, we'll try to find that out because we'll have these teams again. Here's a three put up, and that three put up by Russell it doesn't go. And Wyoming East comes down with the rebound. Two and a half to go in the ball game. Forty point lead for the Lady Warriors. And we got a foul on Wyoming East. Well, as you mentioned, Maris, this has been the Lady Warriors game from start to finish. They had a 15-6 lead at the end of the first quarter, 37-13 at intermission, and it's been expanding. Well, it's expanded to 40, which is the largest lead of the game right here, here in the last two and a half to go. Here's a three ball. is short, and that three ball that time was put up by Bain, and a held ball, and it'll stay with Princeton. Chloe Clendenin is wearing 33 for the Lady Tigers. She was in on that tie-up. So tomorrow, day three, you had mentioned this earlier, Bill. We'll get started a little earlier. It means i got to get up a little earlier tomorrow. I have that first game. What about the cartoons? Oh, I'll still get my cartoons. Okay. I just didn't get up. I just watched them. <laughs> <laughs> now i got to get up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't get up. I don't have to get up, but now I do tomorrow. You know, this retirement gig is working out pretty good for me. You're working now more than you ever did. Yeah, but it's not work, though. I don't really call this work. And there's a shot put up. And back the other way comes Wyoming East, and ball's knocked out of bounds or dribbled out of bounds. Yeah, you know, Bill, I always say, you know, you never work a day in your life if you really enjoy what we're doing. And we got into this business because we really enjoy it. And, you know, appreciate Butch Mounts and the fine people at Video Productions. They has given us an opportunity to be able to do this. Pulled both of us out of retirement. This is my 49th year of doing these games. Yeah, you're 49th and my 34th year of doing games. Of course, you and I spent over 20 years on radio together, and there's a foul on the floor. Speaking of Keith Thompson, he's right beside you, one of the sports voices and news voices at WJLS. He's been around the block uh, for, what, 40 years? A year or two. Well, you know, I've been around 34. Keith's been around a little longer than I have. So, you said 45? Wow. Bill, you've been around about you as are long. Old. You've been around as long as about as anybody. Yeah, that's right. And we do love it. Well, you'd think that you'd love it if you stayed in it that long. <laughs> you know, I would hate to think that I'd be doing something for 34 years that I didn't like. And you get this great food. I mean, rubber fries. Well, I get to hang out know, with you. Cold burgers. I mean, uh, what else could uh, you Bill, want? Bill, I get to hang out with yeah. you. <laughs> we tell these stories. There's a short shot into the lane. It's good. And that's Clendenin for Princeton.
Here's a three put up in the corner. Good! A bank shot from the far corner. Wow, you don't see that happen too often. That one, that's the, one of the most difficult spots on the floor, and to bank it in for the th three ball for Wyoming East. That was Hatfield. I'm not going to try to pronounce her first name. Ball's at my foot. I can feel it. I just can't see it as we watch the Little Caesars. And some everybody, look at that. Look at Bank in. Wow. McKinley? Whatever you say. Hatfield. Nice shot. Three ball. That was a great shot. And a nice cheering section for the Lady Warriors. They were thrilled, including the guy with the flag. Yep. Here coming up on the final minute of this ball game. So Wyoming East is going to win it. They're going to go to nine and two. Princeton is going to go to six and two. As Russell will check into the ball game for Wyoming East. But I can tell you right now, uh, for the and I'm sure there are a lot of other good teams that we haven't seen, Bill, in girls double-A, but this Wyoming East team is going to be a team to reckon with. And uh, I don't know about the favorite, but going to be one of the favorites to repeat in class double-A on girls basketball. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, our next game will feature these boys teams from these two schools, and we'll have that uh, coming up. Well, we'll have just a very short wrap-up show here where we'll have our Pepsi player or players of the game. And then we'll have Wyoming East boys against the Princeton Tigers. 4.30 tip, 4.15 pregame. Burner makes the first one. Second one is also good. She gets them both. So the final 50 seconds of this one. And this has been Wyoming East from the very beginning. Like I said, the game was tied at two. And then after that, it was all Wyoming East. As they blitz Princeton here this afternoon. And they have this big lead at 64-25. So Wyoming East maybe just trying to run out the clock. And then Princeton able to get a steal there. Final 30 seconds of the game. Connor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice looking drive and a layup. Yeah. And if you're Wyoming East, you don't really need to shoot. Maybe just run the timeout. But. They're going to shoot it anyway. I realize when you get on the floor, you don't maybe get an opportunity to play as much. You want that opportunity to shoot the ball. Here's a three for Princeton. That doesn't go. That three was put up by Bain. And that's the ball game. The final score is Wyoming East 64 and Princeton 27. We'll have a quick wrap-up and then get you ready for the next game. We'll be right back after this here on Video Productions. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. And we welcome you back to the Raleigh County Convention Center with Bill O'Brien. I'm Maris Lowry, the heavy hitter. Mr. Nick Eskins produced and directed the game here this afternoon. Also, uh, Andrew Bolin and Jackie Moon on camera. And what a big win, Bill, it was for the uh, girls' program at Wyoming East as they defeat Princeton 64-27. And they really led really a wire to wire. Like I said, the game was tied at two, and that was it. After that, it was all a Wyoming East. They led 15-6 to six at the quarter, 37-13 at the break, 54-19 at the end of three, 64-27 to win the game. We'll take one more break. When we come back, Bill will have the totals for you, and we'll do it on the other end of the break here on Video Productions.
I heard every time you order Little Caesars during the Pizza Pizza pregame, you score a fun perk. And I heard Justin Jefferson is the most handsome receiver of all time. Yeah, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. No, I heard people say it. Order pizza and Pepsi online on game day for a chance to win Super Bowl 58 tickets. Pizza Pizza. Take me home, country road. 105.9 WTNJ. And welcome back to Courtside here at the Raleigh County Convention Center. Final score, Wyoming East defeats Princeton this girls game 64-27. to For all the numbers of this game and how it got that way, here is Bill. Okay, we just got the official stats right now, so I haven't had a chance to look at them, but I'll tell you that Princeton put a lot of people in the scoring column, and let's go right down the line. Kaylee Wright scored two points. Kendra Connor had two. Maddie Stull had two points. Five points for Bree Brett Bain. Four points for Addison Sarver. Four points for Emma Harmon. Two points for Allie Parks. Two points for Asia Collins. Two points for Lakin Burner. And two for Chloe Clendenin. So 12 got in the scoring column, but the high point maker was a five point effort for Bree Bain. For the Wyoming East Lady Warriors, the winners today, and they had a good one two punch. Kendall Lusk had 19 points, including six of eight from the floor. And uh, September, uh, I'm sorry, um, um, Katie Blackburn, looking at these for the first time, had 17 points. The rest of the scoring, nine for Madison Clark, the point guard, eight points for Abby Baker, five for McKinley Hatfield, two points for Charlie Price, two for Kenna Price, and two for Olivia Monroe. Team totals for Princeton. They hit 11 shots in 40 tries. That is 27.5%. They missed all eight of their three-point tries, so obviously zero. And at the foul line, they were 5 of 9, 55.6%. For the winning Wyoming East team, they shot 25 successful out of 43 tries. That's 58%. From downtown, 7 of 15, that's 47%. And from the charity stripe, 7 of 10, 70%. Turnovers, I always like to look at that. And you've got 22 turnovers against Princeton to 13 for Wyoming East. And in the rebounding department, 21 total rebounds for Princeton. And can that be right? 14. 14 total rebounds is all that Wyoming East had. Well, it was the Lady Warriors all the way as they win this game 64-27. to 27. And, Bill, perhaps maybe the most fascinating number, at least to me, was 29 total players between the two teams played in this game. Mm-hmm. You know, and Wyoming East was able to, when the game was still somewhat of a game, able to substitute freelance. Of course, at the end of the game, then both teams emptied their bench. But 29 total players played in this game between the two teams. That'll wrap it up for this one. We've got one more thing to do. One that's more the thing to do, and Pepsi. that's the Pepsi Cola player of the game. That's right. I was going there. And you were going I was going there. <laughs> I said, we got this. That'll wrap it up for this. And before we leave, Bill will tell you who the Pepsi player of the games are. Well, for the Lady Warriors, they had a good one two punch. Kendall Lusk scored 19 points today, and Katie Blackburn had 17. Those are the Pepsi Cola players of the game. Congratulations to those two Lady Warriors, but really, the entire team played so well. As you mentioned, Sudin almost 60% from the floor, and they did it all right today. All right, that'll wrap this one up. Once again, the final score Wyoming East 64, Princeton 27. For all of our crew here at the Raleigh County Convention Center Video Productions, for the heavy hitter, Mr. Nick Eskins, also the brains of the outfit, Faith Alexander is here this afternoon, as well as our two outstanding cameramen, Jackie Moon and Andrew Boland. For Bill O'Brien, I'm Maris Lowry. And coming up next, Bill will have the call of the boys game between Princeton and Wyoming East. And, Bill, I guess that's going to air in about 10 minutes, and the game will tip at the bottom of the hour at 4.30. So until then, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Uh, Just sit tight, and we'll see you in 10 minutes, everybody.